day nine. How are you guys feeling? Well, I'd like to ring some Tibetan bells just to clear the energy a little bit. So just taking a deep breath and let the sound penetrate through the airwaves and do a clearing on you and your energy. So that's just an easy way to clear the energy around you. You know me. Every day I come on here talking about cleaning your energy. <laughs> so today I have another way for you to clean your energy. But first I'd like you to introduce you to Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin is the goddess of compassion. And she is the, she's considered the Eastern of the Western Mother Mary. That's also Kuan Yin. I don't know if you can see that too well. That's white jade. It's, I really love her. And, and this is um, a common, I guess, uh, statue or figurine that you would see of Kuan Yin. And you actually can put water in it and then tip it upside down and do that. And then out of her little vase that she holds, one drop of water drops into the dragon's mouth one at a time. And they call those her tears of compassion. You can work with Kuan Yin to help bring comp more compassion into your life. I just like to mention that today for some reason. Um, I have crystals all over the house and she stays in my compassion. I have an actual corner that's a compassion corner. So every time I look at it, I re it reminds me to practice compassion. And this is a rose quartz um, crystal. And... Um, in my compassion corner, there's Kuan Yin's and lots of rose quartz because rose quartz um, really is a, a stone that helps your heart. So if you need heart healing in any way, um, get a rose quartz. It can be just even a simple piece and you can just put it right on your, uh, around your chest, on your heart chakra and allow it to clear your heart chakra and bring in that really loving energy. Anyway, today I want to talk about spirit to spirit. And it's a great technique. I've been already talking about, um, you know, uh, the neutral separation where you um, separate your energy from other people that you're around a lot. I talked about cutting cords so you don't transfer energy back and forth to people, uh, from people and, you know, mess up your own energy. I've talked um, a lot about different energetic techniques, but today I really want to talk about one that I tell, seem to tell a lot of people, um, and it can really, really help you um, in relationships, um, any kind of relationship, whether it's a boss or a personal or a child. Um, it will help with any relationship, and I tell you, it really, really works wonders. So it's called Spirit to Spirit. And this is one you're never going to want to forget. You're always going to remember, want to remember this. So what you do if you really want, you really, really need to talk to somebody, and, but you don't feel you can have the conversation face to face, whether it's because you're embarrassed or, you know, maybe you want to say something that you would never say to them to their face, or maybe they won't hear you. Or what? Or maybe they're in a coma. Maybe they're too sick. Maybe they're uh, mentally ill. But regardless, it doesn't matter what the reason is. It's basically you want to use it when you have a message that you really need to communicate, and there's something that you really need to um, change within that relationship. So let's say um, you call up whoever it is, and I'm just going to use um, the name Joe again. I don't know why Joe always comes up. I don't even think I know a Joe. Anyway, Joe. So I say um, I'm going to call up Joe. So I, this is how I do it. I'm calling Joe spirit to spirit. Now you can say that in your head or you can say it out loud just like I said it. Once you call in whoever it is you want to talk to, then you just imagine that they're standing right in front of you, that their spirit is standing right in front of you. And this is when you want to tell the spirit 
everything that you have to say to this person. Just let it all out, whether it's nice, whether it's mean, whether you're yelling, whether you're crying, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether anything, it doesn't matter. Let it all out. Whatever you have to say, just let it out, okay, as much as possible. So this could go on for two minutes, it could go on for 30 minutes. It just depends on how much you need to say. Now. The important thing to do is to remember, once you've said everything you need them to hear, you want to tell them what you need from them. So say that Joe was just um, taking me for granted and I needed more love or something like that. And I would say, Joe, I'm so tired of you taking me for granted. I'm sick and tired of your crap. You know, you're always with your friends. You don't pay attention to me and when you're around you just go to sleep and then you're rude you're such a jerk oh my god I just you know okay you get the point so you go on and on then I'm gonna say Joe what I need from you is to see that you really care about me spend time with me do some quality things with me um, tell me that you really love me and show me that you love me and okay so I say everything I need to say once I'm done saying everything I need to get out, everything that I want or need, then I'm going to say thank you for listening and goodbye. And then you're going to imagine that the spirit is leaving. Now, it's that easy. It's, it's so easy. That's all you have to do. So what happens is when you talk to the spirit, it goes into that person's subconscious. So that person definitely gets the message. Without a doubt, I've had, I've had too much evidence and proof that this works. Without a doubt, it, that goes into the subconscious of that person, and that person is going to start doing different things with you, acting differently. Um, he'll, you'll, you'll start seeing evidence that that message has gotten through, and that person really wants to do something to change. Now, of course, everybody has free will, so, you know... I mean, I've never seen this not work. Let's put it that way, okay? So I don't know what your experience is, but I've always seen it work. One, um, I'll tell you the very first time I ever did it. I remember this was many years ago, and I was so mad at my boyfriend. I don't even remember why, but I was like, I remember driving home, and I was just so mad, and I was yelling in the car. I probably looked like a crazy person, and I was just chewing him out and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, you know, I just really need you to, um, you know, respect me. No, what did I say? I just really need you to love me and cherish me and whatever. I don't remember all of it. It was something like that, but I said the word cherish because that's what I always remember. Well, I went home that night and went to sleep. It was, you know, no, nothing else happening. I just went to sleep. And then the next morning I got up and I went into the bathroom and was getting ready for work and um, he walked in and he said, I love you, honey. I cherish you so much. And honestly, I almost fell on the floor fainting because he has never used the word cherish ever. And it was just the night before that I said that spirit to spirit and I used that exact word cherish and he said it the exact next morning. So that is no coincidence. And honestly, I don't believe in coincidences anyway. Coincidences are just things lining up with you perfectly. Another time, this is really funny because I, I really want to tell you it's really important to do all the steps. Long story short, I was, this was another time, another year. Um, I was really mad at him again. And for about three or four nights, all I was doing in my head was yelling at him spirit to spirit. Spirit. I was just like yelling, yelling, mad, bad, 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 mad, yelling, yelling, but just in my mind. And we would be watching TV every night and I'd just go on and on and on. So one day um, after, it was like probably day four, he came home from work and I was putting laundry away and he walked in and he just started arguing with me. And I was like, okay, and just ignoring him because I, I didn't feel like arguing. So I continued to put laundry away, and then he was trying to argue again. Now this is somebody who is not argumentative or not, um, 
somebody that tries to start anything? Definitely not. So this was totally out of his character. And so he did it again. He was trying to fight again. This was like the third attempt. And I finally turned around and I looked at him and I said, do you want to fight? Because I haven't even said one word to you since you walked in the door and all you're doing is trying to start an argument with me. And once I said that, he got this big question mark look on his face like, God, she's right. What am I doing? Why am I arguing? And then it hit me that I had never finished the process and said what I needed or wanted from him. All I was doing is complaining and, and nagging or whatever. And I was never finishing the whole process of what I needed and wanted. So he was puzzled. But the funny thing was that he was picking up on me yelling and yelling and yelling at him every day. So he was like sick of it. Obviously, this was like day four and I had been yelling and yelling at him every single day in my mind. And so he was just verbally expressing back how he felt. But he didn't even know that I, what this process is or what I was doing. And I was the one that finally realized it. And actually, I thought it was so funny when I realized it. But I'll admit to this day, it's been probably 10 years since that conversation, since that happened. And I never admitted it. But it's a great story to tell. And when I teach my classes and teach people how to do this, um, I always tell that story. So please remember to do all the steps. Call up the person's name spirit to spirit. Imagine they're in front of you. Say everything you need to say, good, bad, or ugly, crying, happy, sad, whatever. Just get it all out. Three, tell them what you need or want from them. Four, thank them and see them leave. Four steps. Very easy. So, think of someone that you could use some healing with. Think of someone that you'd like to get along better with. Spirit to spirit. It works every time. And um, I really hope that you have great success and it helps you change your life. Okay. Um, I promised a card reading to whoever put their name on my Facebook wall under the current video. Let's see. Okay, Carolyn, your name's coming to my mind stronger than anybody else's. So this one's for you, Carolyn. Angel of self-worth. You are currently undervaluing yourself. It's time to regain yourself. I'll tell you, this probably isn't only for Carolyn. Probably every single person watching this video has some worthiness issues going on because that's a really common one. So what you everybody needs to do, including you, Carolyn, is just the angels are telling me, just take in a deep breath and Breathe into your heart because they're telling me that there's some, a lot of heart chakras out there that feel very heavy and full of um, sadness and upset and just, and I hear the word grief. So remember, you can call Kanya and the Goddess of Compassion to help you to have compassion, first of all, for yourself. Before you even have it for every, anyone else, have compassion for yourself, okay? Treat yourself kindly. Love yourself. If you want the people around you to love you and treat you kindly and respect you and, and pay attention to you and nurture you, then you've got to do that to yourself first. Okay? Ask Kuan Yin to help you have compassion for yourself. Ask the angels of compassion. Have the angels of self-worth help you to have more self-worth um, and love yourself and respect yourself and compassion for yourself and i will see you tomorrow